I'm going all in on this gamble of a D-News episode. How is it that casinos keep people gambling even if they don't really want to? Hey, Penny Slaughters, Trace here for D-News Today, diving into the flashy world of gambling. Literally, it's flashy. There are lights and sounds and smells and adventures to be had and money to be won, but when you're in a casino, there are hundreds of papers and experiments brought to bear to keep you in their gilded halls. So, how do casinos use science to keep us gambling? A 2010 study in the Journal of Mental Health Addiction found both lights and music created increased arousal effects. And a new study in the Journal of Neuroscience looked at the brains of rats, finding increased arousal increases dopamine reception, one of our brain's powerful reward chemicals. Feeling good means that we spend more, so casinos cash in on dopamine at every turn. Numerous studies say arousal means more gambling, and faster music paired with flashing lights makes people bet more quickly and spend more money. But that's not all. Marketers know the color red makes people more aroused too. And studies show red light makes people more gambly than blue light. Thus, casinos put red everywhere. The Journal of Gambling Studies revealed a bunch of other insights into gambling behavior as well. Things like the illusion of control, the idea if you're pushing a button or pulling a lever, you have control over the situation. And if the risk seems low and you get an immediate response to your bet, you're gonna bet more and then more. Some casinos even offer free drinks, which is great, right? For the casino. Alcohol lowers your inhibitions and increases expectations, further increasing play. Even the architecture has evolved, and I have to say I find this particularly fascinating. Originally, casinos focused on something called gaming design. All the slot machines and tables were lined up all together in a maze-like configuration. It was thought that this design would make us step up and gamble at every turn and kind of get lost in there. But based on scientific studies, Casino design has been radically redefined. New casinos are based on the idea of adult playgrounds with high ceilings and expansive, opulent, easy to navigate spaces. The Bellagio is the quintessential example. Old style casinos famously avoid windows and clocks to help gamblers lose their sense of place and time, but playground casinos make people feel happy and comfortable with sunshine, high ceilings, and art, keeping us gambling, having fun, and spending money. A study published in the journal Environment and Behavior proved that this is working. People like the playground design, especially women. In the compact gaming design, women felt crowded by others around them. If they were too close to other people, they would gamble less. The adult playground design mitigates these problems and women now gamble even more. Slots, for example, are historically very popular with women and revenue has increased over 30% since 1970. It turns out adding windows, bright colors, and a resort feel has a huge payoff for the house. The research showed gamblers in a resort playground casino felt more comfortable and are reminded to have fun constantly, and so they do. The thing that casinos don't do, though, is pump in oxygen to give gamblers a modest high. It's a myth dating back decades. What they actually do do <laughs> is pump in scents, which keep people aroused, back to that arousal effect thing. And according to the scent designer for one company who does this, Aromasis, refreshing and soothing scents will keep people gambling longer. In the end, casinos cash in on exploiting our psychology to the tune of $240 billion a year. They do it with the games, the decor, the drinks, the smells, assaulting our senses to get us to just make it rain in the desert in Vegas and elsewhere. But what about gambling addiction? Isn't that worth considering as well? Gambling addiction does have a genetic component, meaning if your mother or father has gambling addiction, you might too. Lacey explains how that works right here. Having a relative with a gambling problem puts you at eight times the risk of developing one as well. Now amongst those with gambling problems, 11% of the relatives had pathological issues. Compare that to the non-addictive population where only 1% of their relatives have gambling problems. I don't really like gambling myself, I'm just not taken in by it all. I like wandering the hotels, but I don't like pumping quarters into the machines. What do you guys think? Do you gamble? Have you stopped to think about why? Let us know down in the comments. Subscribe so you get more D-News every day, and I will see you next time.